Great, this is a plus. We have increased our balance. Let's look at the history of the transactions. So, four, five, two returns. Well, we traded well. Hello guys, I'm Samantha, and today we are going to talk about two indicators, bears and bulls. But before we start, I'd like to remind you that if you're interested in joining to my VIP Telegram group where I share all my trades, you can text me directly on Telegram so I personally answer you and add you to my private group with signals. Please don't forget that there is a limit of just 100 people, so you need to be quick to be there. Today we have two indicators, but in fact it is one indicator. This is an indicator that measures the strength of bulls and bears. It was developed by Alexander Elder for stock markets, but it can also be successfully applied for other assets. Why do we need such an indicator? First of all, in order to demonstrate the trading power to the buyer in the market, or bulls, as it is customary to call buyers in the market. If the buyer is stronger than the sellers in some period, then an upward trend is established in the market, and if the sellers are stronger, then the price is reduced for the balance. The indicator of the strength of buyers or bulls allows you to determine the slightest change in the trend and thereby predict its possible change in the future. The moving average is used as a basis in this indicator. It symbolizes balance for a certain time period. Another important parameter is the price peak. It allows you to determine the maximum strength of the buyer for a certain period. So in general, it is customary to track this indicator on a histogram. Now I'll show you how it should look in the picture. But on pocket money it is shown by a sliding line here, there at the bottom. Also a particular attentive notice it that there is a zero mark for each of the indicators, but the indicators are built lower or higher depending on the market situation. So the bear strength indicator is the reverse indicator of bull strength. Its task is to determine the movement when the price diverges from the movement average reading and an imbalance is formed in the market. So let's deal with the issue of using this technical analysis tool. First of all, it is worth noting that such algorithms work best together with trend indicators installed on the chart. You can use, for example, a moving average, which will indicate to us the general trend in the market. Let's say this indicator. I added it. In this case, the use of this filter will not be superfluous, since by itself bull power and bear power displays the trend in dynamics. So what is needed for spot and moving average is directed upwards as it is now, and the bull power indicator itself is about zero. That is, in this case, you need to open long positions when the movement of the moving line is accompanied by a minimum on the bear strength and Cutter, let's find where our chart goes down. Well, for example, here. When the movement of the moving line goes with a minimum on the bear strength indicator, a downward trend develops in the market. If the moving average line has turned up, the bars no longer update the minimums on the indicator, then we see a reverse upward trend. Also, the disadvantages of these indicators include the fact that they cannot be used separately without the moving average. If you lose an important filter, the clumps will be removed chaotically. The disadvantages include using the despite the fact that this is a fairly strong signal, it appears quite rarely and often works poorly. After divergence, you can't get a different outcome instead of the expected movement, and the signal will not give a result. That is, there are many oddities of using these indicators. In general, it is difficult to understand those traders with these indicators in pocket, but they take up a lot of space and reduce the graph itself, and it is poorly visible. But we remember that bulls talk about about an increase and best talk about a decrease. That is, bulls are buyers, people who make the price higher and higher, which is why the chart goes up and bears are sellers who have collected profits and sell, demand decreases and the price decreases, everything is logical. And zero is the mark from which we start. If, for example, the bulls are about the zero mark and our moving average shows us a move to increase, we understand perfectly well that it is possible 
possible to enter an increase here. Again, we do not break the trend. Let's put $150 each. So now we will find a currency pair. Again, all the rules with time frame, checks and refusal to trade against the trend remain in force. So here we can simply not look for the maximum updates of highs and lows. That is, we see an indicator. This is for people who do not want to look for the maximum and minimum, although they are easy to break. Okay, let's trade. Like this, bulls up, bears are below zero, bulls are above zero. We also find the senior chart for a decrease, so you can't bet on an increase here. So here the bulls are overcoming the zero mark, but now it has decreased here. On the other hand, our chart is moving up, yeah. Bears are even lower than zero, they have such great forces. You can immediately see the minus that I was talking about. Okay, we're looking further. Here we have bears above the zero mark, but we also have bulls above zero. But the moving average tells us about a decline, and in principle, an upward trend. Yeah, well, it's difficult here, of course. Here, both create a sideways movement, it's difficult to trade. A strong downward trend, bulls are at zero, bears are going up, bulls are getting lower, so here it is necessary to sell. A deal for a decrease, we open it, so it's hard to work with these indicators, of course they are quite slow, but violating the basis rules you can trade, so let's look. I don't understand, is this a plus? Yes, this is a plus, but it is on the verge. Of course, there are disadvantages on these indicators. While the transaction was going on, I remember that I explained a little incorrectly. Look, we have zero for two indicators. It is now closed, but here it goes to zero and here it is extended and here it is also zero. That is if we have a downward trend and the bulls are below zero and the bears are at the bottom and moving down, then we can trade on a decline. In the situation those the opposite, for example, here our chart went up and this moving average would go like this and the trend will be on the rise. We just it would be necessary for the bulls to be above zero and go up and the best to be above zero or at the border then we will be able to trade on an increase I hope now it is more or less clear here we are at some terrible moment again these indicators are very strange if you don't trade on them you just look best or bulls who is stronger in the market so then it's good but it's difficult to trade with them we look we understand that the trend is moving down but according to the indicators we have everything at the top that is the bulls went up and buy okay we go further there's a sideways movement here's clear the trend is down but the sideways trend is so here we have an interesting moment to trade on an increase so we will do it we open a deal for an increase and let's look after the deal i'll explain why It's great, it's a plus. Here I had to ignore the indicator a little bit. The situation was just interesting. I couldn't help but trade it. The situation is very simple. We clearly see such a moment here. Here is our level. Let there be a pink stripe. The chart could not go below it. It constantly rolls back and now it's same here. The shadow was thrown back as a result. If you put in a long-term deal here for a couple of hours, for example, then we can confidently trade up. But but since we have one minute, we see the same thing that we have. In fact, a decrease increase, a decrease increase on a rollback we trade. Excellent and profit here. If there is a trend for an increase, then it's a great moment to go for an increase. It's hard to see, of course, the previous maximum that is here is the minimum and here is the next minimum. Here is the minimum, minimum, maximum, maximum and here is almost that too. Well, a strong trend for an increase has begun, but so far there is no way to put well. Here is 54% of the payout. We will not take risks here. I find a lot of moments where we need to break our trend and put the indicator on, but I no longer believe in this indicator, but in compliance with the rule about the trend that as we have a decrease now, here is a zero and here is an upward turn, but it is dangerous to trade in a sideways movement, a dangerous deal. Here we have a sliding one, but it goes sideways, that is it goes up, down, well, let's open a deal and watch. It 
turned out to be a good plus. I put it on the indicator. I didn't come up with anything like that. So let's look at the downward trend. No matter what huge candles there are, nothing has changed. The downward trend has remained and the bears are essentially losing here. There are 42, here 35, here 0 0.17. Weaker bears than the bulls. We will look at the level of the moving line. It is here at 0 0.40, here 0 0.30. Although the trend is down, we have bulls that is buyers are sitting and ready to buy, which is why the price will rise. The higher the demand, the more expensive, the lower the demand, the cheaper. So if the trend is going up, then it is on the decline low. Let's do it for the test. I like to spend such a wonderful moment in the videos for you to make sure. So I have, a, I have such a suggestion. Here, for example, the indicator is constantly trying to break the one rule to bet against the trend. The trend is down, but look how much the bulls are going up, right? That is, they directly raise the price. Why? It isn't clear, but we are observing such a situation. The probability that we will now trade and sharply the candle will go up is huge. So, okay, let's trade $60 on the increase. The deal is open and let's watch. Okay, it turned out to be a great plus for deals in total for all the time and everything is the, in the black so, so, but it's hard, okay. Let's see, so far we are betting against the trend, but we still closed the deal with a profit. Here's a downward trend and this is indicated by the moving average line. Yes, we have a certain level at the top from which it bounces every time and I'm interested in lowering here. Yeah, I don't want to trade on such a candle, we will return the balance and here we see a deal decrease in all canons. The bulls have turned around a lot and the bears are now going down. Let's trade it on the rollback, the deal is open, so let's watch. Wow, I have just no words how we got to this. Just look at the hourly time frame. I'll explain you clearly what's happening. Just look and imagine how lucky we are. Here we have a level from which the price bounces all day and cannot break through it throughout the day. But I have drawn in pretty evenly and we have not broken through this level since 10. And only we have said it, we get all the delights on scalping. It's just that it's, it's not a pity for such minus. It's extremely rare so at the moment it was not possible to predict all day the price was only bouncing down from this level and now the breakdown occurred exactly on my transaction a sharp change in the trend to increase we can once again do it with you in a smart way and trade on an increase because this is a change of 100% and it will grow and you can also earn money on this and trade more so let's put 150 and cover that historical minus so let's watch Okay, we found. I do not believe that now it will return to this level and this will continue. It's a shock. It's just a shock look. We But we closed the deal for a refund because of which we did not lose and did not earn. Well, okay. The trend is going down. It was going up and now... But no. It has not broken through the lows. It is rolling back. Well, for example, for zigzag, the rollback is not equal to the level that has not broken through. I'd rather look at another currency pair. So if the bulls tell us to trade on an increase then we will trade but there is no question of an increase here but above zero on the other hand it goes down so there are times when it goes up it is turned down and it says that no but well look how good everything is two deals to increase open and let's see Great, this is a plus, we have increased our balance. Let's look at the history of the transactions. So, four, five, two returns, well, we traded well. So, very good indeed. So, we have one minus here. So, of course, it was possible without minuses, but what can we do? Interesting trade, interesting video, two weird indicators. That's it, thanks for watching. As for me, using the inputs of these indicators is a strange idea. It's better just to see how much purchasing power exceeds sales. Well, it's interesting. So this is an important parameter and it needs to be monitored. So I'll leave it like that. So thank you so much for your support, for your comments and likes and bye.